Hello everyone. How'd you like that intro, David? So hopefully my camera's working all right this time. Let me set up. Sir. Shall leave for a moment because I want to set a timer. Thank you. I went for the more serious intro this time. <laughs> yeah. The water bed looks like I was trying a lot harder there. Going, 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 going. How's the sound? Do I need to turn the microphone down from my over exuberant yelling? So this is it's going to be a tough ride because there's a lot of strong riders in this group now. Stronger than last week. I've got Keith and a few guys below 100 in their um, Zwift ranking. So I'm just going to, my original plan was to try and push it hard on the second box hill, but now I'm just going to be trying to hang on. Thanks, David. Alright, two minutes. So who have we got? Okay, man, Keith. Right, Justin Freetag. Lots of guys I don't recognize, but I know that anytime I see a Scandinavian name, <laughs> it's going to smash me. Oh, I'm hoping so, David. Not for his sake, but for my sake. Carl! Three people in the chat now, I think. Welcome to Team World Bicycle. My channel's growing. And welcome to our one night. So they're talking about on the chat, on the in-game chat, because originally this series was supposed to have Facebook page, five divisions for A plus riders with ID, e, but there was not enough A plus riders. So they just can that. So now the A plus riders will ride in A since the second race. The race that you're about to enter is designed either as a good interval session. Or That's right, David. All I need now is Lord. I'll be like a real stream channel. The race is. We got a minute twelve. The results will be posted. Okay, set up. Set up. Set up. It's still the shortest race. You know it makes sense. How hard can it be? <laughs> right on. So I've got my um time to exhaustion set up for 420 watts. Let's see. Let's see how low that is when by the time we get to Box Hill. Could be down to three minutes. You can change it around. Same with my 30 second power. I can change it to whatever I want really. And then time to recovery. I put it 250 watts. I'm hoping I can get right at 250 watts. A lot of this ride. I've got Lord of the Mod. I think he's also having a break as well. Leave my cable out. It's having a break after streams, stream season. Oh, four seconds to go. Gotta wake up. I can't remember what that metric is on the top left hand side. On the Zert player, the 81. Oh, fans making a lot of noise. I'll turn it down. Yeah, 
turn his main roof channel down too. Thanks David. I made the camera smaller too. So I'm not so much at the screen. Live streaming makes things very complicated. Pace has settled down now. I think that's keeping the BL13 jersey. Not sure though, because I'm pretty certain a couple of his teammates are riding. Maybe during the descent of the first box hill, I'll have a sneak at Smith now and see who's in the group. So for those that didn't really pay attention to my posts, which I don't blame you, this is two times greater London loop or whatever the so we go around London and then up Box Hill. And we'll do that twice. Finishing back at the start banner back there. I was thinking about using the bench and the disc wheels, but I ended up softing out and going for the chop. We'll be coming up to that little hill soon. And I'll start pushing to the front before we get there. Originally I was aiming for power on the hill, David, to bring in about two or three riders with me. But now that the group's got some big hitters in it, I'm just aiming to stay in the group. Least amount of effort on the first time. And then see what happens on the second. Alright, here we go. First little hill. <laughs> don't need to push too hard, I think, because it'll all blow up again on this descent. Stretched out there. I was trusting the 
on the draft line. Everyone will slow up the front. So as we used to love it doing a stream today, I looked but I couldn't find one. Yeah. Exactly, David. Ozzy. I'm not surprised. Everyone seems to be out doing amazing rides in the Northern Hemisphere. Well, mind you, even in here in Melbourne, I checked and Nick Bellow kicks. I saw him today, he went to a 100 kilometer gravel event. I think the, one of the sections is called The Wall, which is, I think there's a lot of sections called The Wall, but I think this one was one kilometer at 14% or something. Which for around here, it's a steep climb. Here in Melbourne, you have to go pretty far to get really steep sections that aren't more than 20 metres. Actually, one of the things that I'm really starting to enjoy is because I can just get on it and just smash out an hour, an hour and a half. Good solid effort. Whereas if I go riding on the road, even if I ride to the velodrome, kind of um, yeah, that's probably enjoying Zwift too much. I do like being at Brunswick Velodrome though. It's so scary the first time you ride on a velodrome. You feel like you're going to slide off the wall. Makes you ride like a like you're riding a shopping trolley around the steep sections. It takes a lot of guts to actually go to the top of the track. But you do it because little kids ride past eight-year-olds <laughs> go flying around that track, up the walls, down the walls, taking the shortcuts. Here in Melbourne, we've come out of lockdown a few days ago. Sydney's gone back into lockdown because they've, they've had that Delta strain or something of coronavirus. So I expect a lot more riders from Sydney to be on Zwift in the next two weeks. It's the first time Sydney have had a lockdown. I think they were a little bit hesitant to do a lockdown despite everyone else in Australia thinking they're crazy not to earlier on. I was mucking around with the bikes yesterday on Zwift 
I never realized, obviously, because I didn't have the, the, um, the zip wheels. But when you change the color of the bike, the, the, zip, the zip disc changes color too. So the steel bike actually looks pretty cool. I was tempted to ride that, ride the steel bike with the zip, zip wheels and some Larry color scheme. But I'm not fast enough for that. Thought someone's gone off the front. Got no idea who. Got no idea how much power they're doing. It's one of the reasons why I like this. No hard racing. People can slip off the front. See if anyone tries to bridge. Keep an eye for someone motoring through the route. I don't know if anyone's too keen though, it's pretty early. Richard. I really loved the video the other day put out with the drone footage. Ah, <laughs> uh, different Rich Stephen Pritchard. That's a Pritchard fanboy, that's my issue. Uh, the pace has definitely eased off, no one's bothering to chase anymore. As I said, they won't fly past me. Now, I'm going to do a little video uh, next week, I think. I don't know if we go through it this way, but just the U-turns. I um, forgot what it's called. The, I forgot my video. But that auto brake section on, on that U-turn when we turn left. If we're going... If we're going to turn left there, I'll show you what I'll do if I was, well, I'll show you what I'll do. But I think we're going to turn right. Basically, because it's auto brake, if you get to the front of the group and then you just stop pedaling as you go around the corner, you still maintain your gap. But because you've got a gap, other people are pushing hard to close it. But they're not going this way. I notice a lot of riders don't realise it. So it's probably not an issue on this ride. Oh, there goes someone. Yeah, I can't remember what the number at the top is. I think it might be um, your XSR, which is your... Ah, but it's gone down. Yeah, let's see. Let the wheels go. I should look it up. Ah, it's a cadence, is it? Makes sense. I was going to say, it doesn't really jive with strain. Definitely jives with cadence.
Watch the yellow here. Diamond. Oh yeah, downhill again. We, we go. Yeah, I think we go to that U turn the way I want to go. Let's see. Yeah, this, this dial is cool, because it is my signature. I mean, I potentially today I should be able to break through it if I'm at my best, but it gives you an indication of what to take all of. They're going to use the TTE in the other app that I've been using, they just haven't implemented it yet. But I'm saying that when they implement the TTE, data fields and now discontinue this app. Yeah, but uh, it could be one of those glitches with the TT bike. Without the hard, you can't tell what power they're doing. Uh, so we, we turn left up here, don't we? We go up what still from here. before that those numbers start looking horrible. I was feeling not confident but I was feeling pretty comfortable going to bed last night. But then when I saw who signed up today, definitely the concern is high. Yeah, if I was using the other app, I could get the graph up of my historic effort, the bottom graph. There we go. Who's going to push hard now? I haven't got one in the workout. Yeah. I tried to set it up on the Zwift Sessions player, but it doesn't work with this app. That's why they made that so ABC. Concentrate. Well, 
Well, keep an eye on that purple. David, watch that come right down. Unlike the other app, it doesn't tell you what my MBA is. It just tells you on the, the shades of the graph. But you can see my time doing exhaustion. Oh, what a get. Someone's gone. Oh, my connection's lost on that. Hopefully I don't lose it on the on Zwift. Come back. Alright. Settle down. As I can see, this is already too hard. Break, gotta to get to it. Just a little bit more than it flattens out. This is why you dropped the David. That was nice. And I go. This is the first climb market. Second one still to come. Facing down the lead guy. We'll get him again. Can't see Keith's jersey, is that the one at the front? No, it's a different jersey. Maybe someone can check the fifth power. Cool. I think we dropped Keith. Cheers, Marco. Oh, 
Uh, sorry, Frederick was using this as a training rod. Like my heart rate. Actually, like slightly 160. Not sure I believe that. They're 179. Whew. I got you covered, uh, Marco. Well. You guys are outside. Winter time down here. Uh, I'm down. Yep, kicker's coming up. I'll shoot to the back and then punch it. See if I can drop people. Not paying attention. Wanting a rest after this. Well, I think we dropped one. <laughs> the other brick will catch. Oh, I'll keep it in this for a bit longer. Better get ready to go when they arrive. Grab a gel when I've got a chance. Yeah. It's like a little kicker out of the, up the staircase to worry about now. I think the heart rate should be back online. Oops. 147. Yep, heart rate's back online.
Someone's in the heart. Let's kick it short. Pain in the legs after that. Bit of cut to the beauty shot. I don't like no effort. So it's one of those ones. Yeah, I feel come for a ride. Those silk sharp efforts. You feel them about 20 seconds afterwards. Anyone new here? Just completing the first lap. One more to go. Let's check the power quickly. Good job. Eighteen rows, six power says. <laughs> you must be riding around, David. You're running on a recumbent with those pedals. Could be a good cross training. I wonder if anyone's done an Everesting on one of those pedal recumbents with your hands. <laughs> Last year, or was it this year? Anyway, one was supposed to have the tour down under because of the restrictions. <laughs> How many push ups can you do, David? I was doing some push ups last week. I think I did like three sets of ten. Which is actually an improvement for me. But yeah, last year they had the till down under with Australians only. And they had a special event for Paralympians. And there was lots of different hand cycle methods. Some of them would ride like that, some would do that, and others, one would actually pedal faster with one arm because their other arm was really weak. So they had a, a different gearing system. Uh, Marco throwing shade at David there. <laughs> I think, wasn't Ed doing a push up challenge at some stage? 
Home is my imagination. Everyone seems to do push up challenges on YouTube. What food have you got stuck, stocked up? You're doing the Everesting tomorrow, aren't you, Marco? Or not? I went and bought meat pies, sausage rolls, um, caramel slice. <laughs> oh, smart man, Marco. I never really had any urge to do the Everesting because, I mean, I'd, I wouldn't want to do it outside because that's crazy. And do it indoors. I appreciate people who do a very hard effort and take 15 hours to do it. I mean, not taking away anything from it, but when he does an Everesting, it's not really a big deal to it, unless he's going as hard as he can. I'll have to check them out. Maybe I'll do a lap with them up after this race. Exactly, Mark. I like it. People doing everything where they're riding close to their threshold. Well, not close, but they're riding way out of zone one for 16 hours. That's just nuts. And really shows so much determination. I don't have that sort of determination. The first time I did an everesting, I attempted anyway. I think I did five efforts, had a shower, and thought to myself, why am I doing this? I've already got the training. Like the next day, if I stop riding now, I'll be faster. If I keep riding, it takes me a week to recover. Going after I recover a bit <laughs> from this ride. Just keep your keep your effort going. Try and ride zone one as much as you can. I mean, unless you're going for a PB, but that's, as Paul Lovett would say, full respect. <laughs> the interesting thing was I compared trainers. So I did the first lap using my Wahoo kicker. The Gen 1, but it's still, the guts of it are the same as all the kickers. And then I use my Dorito. And the difference in gearing, keeping the same training difficulty, is pretty stark. So, if you start to run out of gears, just change your training difficulty. There is absolutely no, there's no shame in it. Because people have got, what, 48? 36 is on the back. If you've got semi compact in the 28, it's no use going out and buying another drive train just for an Everest. Exactly, David. Like it's, it's your own personal goal. But back to my point one person riding with one trainer is not having the same gearing with someone else, even between Bluetooth and Ant Plus. I gain a gear with Bluetooth. It works conversely, so I always race in Ant Plus because instead of racing, what am I now? Like the, I'm in the 53, 16 or something. 
I'll be on the 53, 14 or something with my with Bluetooth. Oh, it's going hard. Oh, I'll slow down once I pull it. There we go. All oh, stopped. Handbrakes on. That's no one. There's two of them. Well, that didn't really achieve much. Yeah, I think it's Greater London. We go over Box Hill before the finish. I was actually, you know, um, cycling maven. He lives here in Melbourne too. He's been putting up a lot of stuff for sale. I'm guessing maybe not a baby's on the way or something. But he had a Dura Race 55 9000 series. I've got my, I've got a Dura Race 9000 but in compact, which I never ride, man. That's a, I mean, I ride it, ride it for the, Fondos, but unless I'm riding up out the Zwift, on Zwift it's useless. And of course, Dura Race. <laughs> unless you, unless you like change your weight, which is your bike's <laughs> lighter. Yeah, I was tempted because it's only 150 bucks. I'll see if it's still for sale next week. But the great thing is, is that when you're riding around at Swift, I can ride up and the bigger cogs at the back. <laughs> well, I can see why he's selling it. Cycl cycling made for a lot of weight. Maybe he's not watching. It's very unlikely he is. Yeah, I saw him in that Giro della Donna. Puffing and puffing in the first kilometre climb. And then he got a, a trip with the car. <laughs> About halfway, I think. And then got put back in the in the, in the race. Yeah, Carl's got it. For almost every race on Zwift, because I run 50% training difficulty, I'm never in the small ring. And I'm very rarely in the, I've got a, I've got a 1228. Breakers in toilet break. <laughs> There's no one up the field, up the front, I think. I can try and check. No, no one up the front. See what I mean, David? You run a 50 11. If I'm in the 50.11 on my Wahoo kicker and Bluetooth, I'd be in the 50.11 the whole time on these flat races because of the signal. So when I go up out this lift in the Wahoo kicker and Bluetooth with a 50.34.11.28, I've got all the gears I need. On the Dorito, I still have all the gears I need, but my cadence is much lower. Yeah, but you're a machine, David. You probably didn't even touch the 30, except when you're slowing down for everyone else. What I 
was interested in when I was riding outdoors because I hardly ever do it. Um, I was seeing all the riders that I usually ride on is lift. And surprisingly, the disparity in performance is pretty close. Yeah, if I wasn't riding on, on Zwift, Marco, I would be using the Dura Race 5034. <laughs> it's so funny watching those videos you guys have on your climbs. It looks like goat tracks. The lanes are only just big enough for a part to fit on. Here in Australia, we're not quite like America, but all our roads are wide, except for when you get way out back. Of course, then you get dirt roads. But even those dirt roads, when I worked on the cattle station, this road here, on a cattle station which might have had one car for three days, the dirt road was as wide as this, but then they'd grade the banks. So it have like a big front pain up on the buildings. So you can literally just take your hands off the off the wheel of the car and just ride it like a slot car. Because it'd go up the bank and then push it back down again. Um, so when I see the race that you guys go up, it kind of freaks me out. Especially when you've got teachers and you can't see what's coming around the corner. Obviously the GoPros, yeah, the GoPros obviously shrink your point of view, but still, they are tiny. Years ago when I was 21, I visited there to see my uncle. He was in IT. And he had a Honda NSX. So let me drive the Honda NSX. <laughs> I don't have so much stuff. And the thing is, the roads aren't wide enough to pass without touching the hedges. So here I'm driving this Honda NSX, a German model. So I was left hand drive. <laughs> I was freaking both he and me out as we're passing traffic, touching the hedges. I'm surprised you let me drive. Yeah, I love the MSX. We went to the Goodwood um, Revival, not the Festival of Speed, but the Goodwood Revival. So, he was driving back. And I can safely say, I've never been so fast on a public seat before because all the, all the cars were leaving the Goodwood Festival, driving a little bit faster than they should. But that NSX just had, was so planted. Had just the right amount of power, so as they come out of corners, you can rock it out of them, even with that traction control. The bad thing about being in London though was that the traffic lights would suck in all the fumes from other people's exhausts. Well that's a, that's a car centre built isn't it? And there was actually the, the only gen one, it was a, a red with a black roof. the sound that thing made while you're driving it, it's just awesome. Yeah, when I did um, Around the Bay a few years ago, I was a guy riding an old 980 Pinarello 
I'm guessing you had a 53, 42. That sucks. But <laughs> admittedly, a lot of Japanese sports cars do end up getting crashed. Funny thing about that guy riding that old Pinarello. Steel bike, as I was riding this, which is actually an old Pinarello, but 2010, I think. And some guy came up behind me. I said, oh, that's a nice old bike. <laughs> I thought he was talking to me. So I realised it was the guy behind me. <laughs> he was even saying, oh, I love fellow Pinarellos. So lucky I was two, two gas going up the hill to turn around thinking. But then the guy on the old Pinarello ground his way past me. Looks like he's doing about 40 RPM on a 12%. As we're going up after the seat. I changed my camera so you can, unfortunately, you can see my crappy socks today. These are my try not to get too hot smash fest socks. Bloody hell. <laughs> That's nuts. That's what you did back in the day though. after the ride. Thirty nine twenty five up the blue up to out the wear. I was gonna say did you wear wear your shoes out? These shoes are a little bit worn out from doing some walking on gravel roads I shouldn't have been riding on. Hey Michael, you're just in time for the Smash first, we're about to go up the second box hill climb and then down to the finish. I better pay attention. Get myself a bullet bail power up. Last drink. Well, last drink until the next one. Anyone got any last minute? This one trick will win you this race. <laughs> Do this one trick.
Get back here, Jim. Oh, not much left after that.
Thank you, Fly Black Man. Very small group. Okay, so same thing as first lap. Hit this half, try and drop two or three more runs. Oh, we're in the group. Who we got behind? Yep. Well, yeah, I made the selection. Now, with a smaller group, a long range attack works better. Well, not works better. Small group you can do a long range attack. So, I don't know where a kilometer is, but after the bridge, I'll see if I lost it. Yeah, they won't come down to this. Anyone who didn't make this group is gas. That's the thing, Hayden. Do I trust on my sprint or am I going to go all in? Um, it's a greater London loop. Anyway, we're heading, heading to the bridge now and the finish. So I only, only got to do the staircase climb and then there's pretty much the finish over the bridge. It's a live stream, isn't it? Isn't it? Sitting in the wheels isn't very exciting. If someone's feeling very multitasking, I can see if the guy is in second places in this group. On the GC. There's some bloody national runner from his youth. So he's got an awesome VO2. Yeah, exactly, Michael. People are gassed. If you get a break, people like me don't want to chase it back. If I sneak off the front. Oh, not yet. Yeah, exactly, that's what I was thinking. Oh, 
I got the power on the downhill. Oh my God. I think that went pretty well. I realized I didn't have the power to keep away. So I backed off. But I initiated the sprint. Yeah. Initiating that sprint got me to beat the way. That's Michael. I looked up with that last 50 metres and saw I was catching that guy. I get done with going up a gear, up a gear. I think my cadence was so low at the end, but it's the only way I could get the power. So stay here. Just thanks for watching, guys. <laughs> yeah, David, it's always the best. Nah. Luckily, Marco, I maximised what I had. I was pretty happy with that. Yeah, I think I got... I don't know where that guy came, I didn't see him on all this. Uh, yeah, David. After doing CRL and that Everesting, that's why I talk about Everesting. I don't cover the Everesting so much, but the training is definitely tangible. Doing all that same one really kicks, kicks your endurance in the ass. Yeah. Thanks, Marco. I don't have to change the chat, the channel to the random channel now. I've got more than just the random family watching. I can't lucky my mum isn't that technically inclined. <laughs> Otherwise, she'd be in the chat. All right, let's look at the graph then. Take a picture. Yeah, his last, last three hard digs. I mean, the race was split, obviously here, but this, this split the field. That put the pain on everyone. See, that's what happens with my live stream. You go long rather than usually wait the last little bit. That's a big effort because I did the chase race the other day when we went long on the last lap. Cool. 
Okay, so let's see if he's off the chart. So. Thanks, Michael. Thanks, David. Carl, if you're watching. Yeah. I've got to do some gardening too, Carl. I've got to make a lawn. Problem with Melbourne is it rains every time I decide to make a lawn. And I'm going, have a rest and I'm coming. Come and do an everesting lap. I'm going to run that last intro screen because I put a bit of effort into it. Enjoy your day, everyone. David, build those muscles up. Maybe wedge the wheels and the lawnmower so it's hard to push. <laughs> I'll put in a, I'll be professional. Here we go. 